Hey guys, it's Ellen and welcome to my channel. Today I thought we'd do a nice, simple, loose watercolor landscape. Um, this is perfect for any skill level. What I'm trying to teach you is to get out of your comfort zone. When you look at a photograph, just don't paint everything exactly how you see it. It gets kind of boring, you know? Let's add some different colors and different kind of textures and strokes and whatnot to make it more interesting, more creative. Um, actually get give you a sense of having your own kind of style let me know if you're interested in doing watercolor landscapes like this um, you know I'm just trying to teach you guys how to get out of your own way <laughs> in a way um, leave a comment below I'd love to hear about it you know it's it's just it's sometimes people just get stuck on just painting exactly what they see instead of just trying to play and experiment and this is what this, this is all about experimenting also check out my Patreon where I have exclusive tutorials and extra stuff that are not on YouTube. You can see the thing in the right hand corner coming up in a second. Boop. And now without further ado, let's get painting. All right, so let me go over the supplies I'll be using. I'm using this pad, um, well, this block from um, Fabiano. It's called Aquarella Watercolor, 100% cotton, uh, paper towels. I got my paints here, water jars. I'll be playing with a few brushes. I'll be using my um, Princeton 3 4 inch Velvet Touch Series flat wash brush. And I'll go back in with some Neptune brushes, maybe the 10, maybe the 12, depending on how I feel. And if I want to do details, I would go in with the number 8, Princeton 8 Long Round. Um, I'll give you guys a reference photo. Again, this is not a traceable tutorial. I really want to get people out of their comfort zone by, you know, you're just tracing something from somebody else. You're not really teaching yourself to, like, look at things look at the shadows look at the shapes create your own creativity with your own style with colors and shapes that's that's where you want to grow as an artist um, so I do get a reference photo here but I'm not gonna follow the thing to the T as you see it's kind of like a late summer field a lot of like tans and oranges but I'm gonna just create kind of like what I feel like I'm gonna make it look bright and more colorful my interpretation of it so I'll start off with the sky, and I'm not going to put all these clouds in it. I'm going to just do what I feel like. I just kind of took the photo because I liked where the lines were for the trees and all these little shapes in here and these little separations of here. It kind of reminds me of the Italian countryside a little bit. So I'm playing around with the color on this one, kind of like the Matisse one we did. And so here, I can start off by putting a wash of water. I might use a bigger brush next time. This one's kind of a small brush. Or I could just even use that number 12 Princeton brush. Just kind of washing in some water here. Do, 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 putting across. Now blocks are great for wet on wet because they're already glued down. So they really kind of stay flat, which is nice. If you want to use a lot of water, these are perfect. They're usually more expensive because of that fact, because they're kind of glued. All right, and I'm just gonna play around with color now. I'm gonna grab some ultramarine blue. I'm actually gonna switch brushes. I'm gonna switch to number 12. Blue. I have this color peacock blue I like a lot here. I'm gonna mix that around. Just gonna play around with some color here. Ooh, intense sky. Just throwing the color in, grabbing some more water. Now I think my finger got here, so it's resisting paper. Try to keep your fingers like clean when you're painting and touching the paper. I've been having this issue. You know, I generally put a lot of moisturizer on my hands. And if you like me, you might want to sit out adding a little peacock blue. It's got a little green and yellow in here, so it's making a little bit green. I'm not too happy about that. I might grab this color that I have here. It's this opera color. Put a little bit of that down here by the ultramarine blue. So it's going to be a little more purple. I can even throw that right in here. Just playing with color. It's supposed to be relaxing, de-stressing. You're not supposed to be stressed out when you paint. You know, if you hear this humming noise, that's the AC because like everybody in the planet right now, the air is so humid it's miserable so this is pretty wet if I want to do the clouds I might like take mop up some of my paint like this 
See how I'm twisting my brush and then tapping it back on the paper towel if I wanted to put the clouds back in there. I'm going to get a little bit deeper in my color. Let's get more intense. I might lift it up a little bit too. That helps a lot for the color to move down the page. Kind of going an angle like this, as you can see, also. Add a little bit of that pink, Maybe that purple. Pretty intense. And it's going to stop right where the water stops, as you can see. Now I might want to lift up some of that paint. Let it fold right in there. I don't even mind. I really like the opera in there, so I'm going to go back and grab a little bit of that in my brush. Woohoo! Gonna add some on this side. This really pretty pink color. Just kind of tapping it in. You see, I'm test tapping it. Get it really loose. Can add a little more blue. Woo. You can get more intense, so you could add like a little Prussian blue. Getting it more intense. The sky. Again, just kind of a loosely just kind of putting it in almost like in a V. And then I'm just gonna lift up a little bit over here. Alright. Now I've kind of gone onto my mountain a little bit, but that's okay. It's gonna be darker in that area and I can just paint right over with some dark greens. In this section I am going to play around with some of the yellowish tan colors. Kind of dark. I don't know painting is so dark. Get a little bit lighter. <laughs> I have to do that with the camera. And again, I'm just going to go loose and fast. So I'm going to grab yellow. I have this color called burnt umber. I'm dipping my brush back into the water. And I really just want to just go right to the paper. Go real fast. Grab a little more brown. I'm clanking, that means I'm dipping. And I don't know if it's necessary to fill the whole piece of paper in. Now I've grabbed some more water so that I can bleed downward. Just gonna go like that. It's not necessary to paint every nook and cranny you see. Tapping in that front umber color pretty intense. It's a brown color. And then we have some of that in here, but we don't have to keep it all that. We can kind of like play around with some color if we wanted to. Maybe oranges. I have that opera color mixed with the yellow and you get this bright, almost coral color. I know, I'm going to be crazy by mixing intense colors. But this is the whole point. You're supposed to play figure out what you want to do. So let's see. It's, you know, not necessarily the color of the field, but I'm playing with color. There's going to be trees in here, so I'm going to go around those a little bit. I don't mind this really bright orange. If you want green, I'll use my peacock blue, my yellow. You know, I've did this in almost all my videos. <laughs> it's bright. It's a lot of thick paint too, so it's very thick, like cream, creamy. And we could just kind of tap in some of the trees, get a feel where they're gonna be. Just be with this big old brush. Just more up here. There's little teeny ones here, and they're going into the orange. So like I said, you're using the photograph as a guide for some of the year landscape. But I don't necessarily think it needs to be followed to a T. You need to be creative. Hence why I put that orange color there. I'll probably go back in here and add some tones too. Play around with the green. Putting in those little trees. I'm going to start with the light color green first, which is the one I'm using now. And there's a lot of greenery back here in these mountainous areas. There's, it could be a greenery plain, so 
some back here, like orange and green. I can put a nice little green plane back here. Give it another one back here. Don't be afraid to do things like that. Even though you see mostly that yellow, brown, late summer color, right? I'm gonna grab some of this. Just mixing up some browns. Tan colors. Maybe mine's a little bit darker. So I'll okay, grab more yellow. Get the orange in there. Again, it doesn't have to be perfect. There's a lot of blue in my yellow right now, so it's made kind of a mess. But that's okay. Messes are fun, messes are good. So I'm going back to this deep yellow color. Kind of fill that in. I really just want a loose, almost like Matisse-like landscape, like we have that Matisse tutorial. So we can keep some of the yellows and add different tonalities to them. Now there's blue in here, it's going to make the yellow green. I'm going to go back to the burnt umber, a little bit of neutral tint, which is an actual color. It's going to change the color of this brown. I'm going to tap it off paper towel. Again, I am using a little bit of browns. Going right under the trees. Just kind of filling this in loosely. You see how it's kind of sectioned off now? You can do some of that same color out here. This is just a loose landscape. There's some sections out here. And again, grab the green tapping some of the green. Now to make a darker green, I talk about this all the time, I take Prussian blue, mix in with some of the greens I already have, kind of just put that dark color out there. The mountain has like a really deep green color. You can kind of keep some of the colors that are in the picture, but I'm playing around with it just a bit. Getting a little more creative. Just This is really simple. I'm just taking this big old number 12 brush and just doing these little tippy taps that mountain. As you can see it's kind of coming together and there's some dark greens on the side. You can also use more just blue. And there's some dark green trees here. Grab some of my Prussian blue. Just kind of tap that in with that green that I just put down. It's really loose. So you can go in between the greens that I have here. And again, back out here, kind of like section them off again with the trees. Just really simply tapping. I want to have fun with my paintings. This is a combination of colors up here, so you can just water it down, add some yellow. See, I'm just going to go in there, kind of put in some yellows. Again, the brown. This is didn't this not taking much time at all. Right? You can get creative. I have this color I love called Verdier Blue. Blues with yellows, like I think of um, Van Gogh's sunflowers. It's a pretty combination. We'll add that kind of in the end. So right now I'm still gonna go back in and tap some greens, some tan colors. Still using this big old brush, by the way. See, I'm gonna fill in all these little crevices. Going up the mountain. Getting my yellow a little bit thicker. Adding in some brown. Oh, it's a little too dark. Just tap it on the paper towel like I'm doing here. Just fill in the spaces. I had that bright opera color with the yellow, made that kind of coral. Now I make like a deep terracotta color. Why not put some terracotta kind of color tones in? 
Like I said, I'm playing around with color here. We're not going to follow the photo to the T. I just want to see how much fun we can have. Just playing with the little sections, different colors. Right, even here. Adding a little of the shadow with this terracotta color. You can see that they like mowed the grass or something, or whatever this was. Maybe it was a field of wheat. So you can kind of put some like lines. You see the lines. Still using this big old brush, by the way. See, I'm just putting this little lines in there. Again, can fill in some of this color. Just taking the brush, holding it on the side. It's like almost, you know, we're about 14 minutes in and it's almost done basically. You can just kind of go back in and add some yellow greens and some darker colors. Bright, bright greens. Again, with these little sections. I'm just tip tapping like the way the trees would be. I'm going to wait till some of this dries and go back in and add some deeper greens. Like you can see that these trees right here are darker in here, so you can still go back in with some blues. I have that ultramarine blue. It's going to make it more of a darker, deep olivey kind of green color tone. The Prussian blue will be like a brighter blue, green. I'm just going to put these trees in, this dark color. Kind of tip tapping it. And again with the little sections. So at this point, you can take like your Prince Nate long round. You can start to play with um, adding some grasses, like you see, there's a little grasses in the front. You can just go like this. Just a nice point to it. If you want to add some grasses, you don't have to. You can keep it nice and flat like we had before. I think this color got kind of washed out, so I'm going to go and add some more yellow, or actually more intense yellow. But almost like a dry brush approach. See? Does it look clank? Grab more yellow. You can kind of fill in some of the yellows in here too. Little white spots. It's a little trick. You can kind of go over the spots that are still kind of white if you want to kind of fill it in put a little yellow in there or a little green see I'm kind of filling them in with yellow that's how I fill them in I'm gonna go back with this nice mustardy color yellow it's real intense and this dry brush approach you see some texture from the paper on here. Like I said, you don't have to fill the whole paper up. You get this nice intense yellow. yellow this color. And go back in and fill this orange section in. A little more intense. Right? And then go back in and just add some darker tones to your oops. Your greens. Get some blues. See, just do the little tippy taps in the little sections that you see in the photograph. Kind of back here and even up here with the trees and on the mountains. I'm not doing anything special. I'm just taking my brush. Got that deep blue. Just kind of like wiggling the brush to get that rounded kind of shape. And then you squint your eyes and you see where all the dark trees are. You just kind of tap them. See, I'm kind of wiggling my brush and kind of tapping it where the sections of the dark trees would be. You can kind of do a line if you want it. That helps. So, like, painting a little line like this first and then kind of going on top of it and kind of wiggling my paint around, that could help also. And getting back to those blues, let's get funky with it. So we can take the Verdier blue 
kind of put that color playing around with this blues and greens and the tense yellow I'm just kind of tapping it around playing adding it why not who's to say it has to be realistic like the photo I'm kind of making my own way here Adding a little blue, a little green, kind of sectioning it off. I can section it off with the blue. Right? Same thing with this beautiful opera color. Ooh, pretty pink intensity. Let's just get a little fun, jiggy with it. <laughs> I had that bright color in there. Why not? No super rules that I like to follow. Now, ultramarine blue, I'll water that down. And it can put the little shadow of the trees with that, like here. I'll come out a little bit here. I'm going to exaggerate the shadows than what's in the photograph. All right. Can put some more greens out this way that you don't really see. Just kind of do some different, you know, add some grasses. You kind of see them. They're like little teeny ones. But you can go back in and add longer ones if you want just the indication of grasses and heck if you wanted to add some flowers do that also you know there's no rules but that's how I would do a simple landscape something like this Add some dark tones out this way and it didn't take much effort much time at all do a simple you know late my phone's overheating again, so let's just add some lines in like you see in the photograph. If you want to highlight some more of the trees, I'm going to grab some white gouache and just stick a little bit of that and go back in here and just highlight on the side. So I'll just go back and take some little bit of the gouache and you can just highlight some of the areas that maybe, you know, I, I want them a little bit lighter. So just dabble in and some of that on the side and some of these trees that maybe I overpainted a little bit that's why I love the old gouache perfect to highlight those trees you can see them now and then you can go back in and add some of the deeper color to the bottom but this is just basic simple landscape you know having fun moving some paint around adding some bright colors if you want to nobody has to put in like the deeper colors if they don't want to take that opera color Woohoo! Look at that. It's like it never happened with the yellow, right? Just put a little bit of highlight in there. It just changes that ever so much. There you go, guys. So have fun painting, like a simple landscape. Maybe I would have kept the clouds. I don't know. It's just enjoy, have fun, add some bright colors. You know, I might go back in, like I said. You can go in and use the blue. Just kind of tap it around. You can take the yellow, bright yellow, right from the tube tap that around in certain areas even up and over here even white gouache by itself too you know don't be afraid just play with your paint <laughs> okay guys take care and i'll speak to you soon